How's it going? So I'm terribly nervous, uh, but I figure if I faint, there's doctors, right? You guys will help me out. Okay, this is being uh, 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 tweeted live here, so uh, you'll be able to get the slides by looking at my uh, Twitter stream. So I'd like to thank a lot of people here, specifically Richard Sachs for my, uh, uh, my walking gallery jacket that I'm wearing right now. Um, also, Todd Park and Aman uh, Bhandari for helping me out uh, with my FOIA request. This would not have been possible without the Freedom of Information Act. They're quite serious when they're talking about open data. Uh, this administration truly is committed to that. <coughs> so uh, the other people I have to thank are all at O'Reilly. You never get on a stage like this without having a lot of people to thank, and many of the people that I have to thank are the people who put me on this stage at O'Reilly. Um, the, the biggest opportunity that they gave me is to write a book, their first book on health IT. It's called Hacking Healthcare. We're changing the name. You will be getting a copy for free, which is ironic because it is well worth buying. <laughs> so please pass that message along to your friends. So um, I'm starting something new. It is a uh, not only for profit micro incubator, which is precisely as cool as it sounds. Um, the idea is to do some things that nonprofits can't do uh, because they're just too slow moving and, and for profits can't do because they really don't make money. This has uh, been a project that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the ethics behind this though. In, when we talk about the ethics of big data, the, the ethical issue is essentially a differential between a difference between um, how much computing power different people have. Now, we've just been kind of trying to resolve the last crisis in this, what we call the digital divide. But in fact, the big data divide is going to be with us for years and years and years. 100 years from now, we're still going to be dealing with the big data divide, and hopefully we'll have fixed the digital divide. So this is a problem that gets worse and bigger as you go forward, and it's about haves and haves nots. It's about how much computational power the people in this audience have relative to the people who go buy things from Best Buy. So Dr. Peel is a privacy expert. She's very concerned about this basic uh, problem that I'm displaying here. Um, she's very, very concerned about this. Let me show you why I'm not concerned. So you guys, right, are the green. And as you can see, the, the number of people who have the skill set that you have, that have the capacity to do big data, um, and who have a broken moral compass are just not that many. So we don't have a problem and a crisis in big data and healthcare yet uh, because of that little sliver right there. Um, this is kind of a joke. This is David, my co-author, and I came up with this as kind of a joke. And then we realized, yeah, actually, that is exactly where we are. Um, and I'm, I'm appealing to this community because there's been times in the technical community, especially if you look at, uh, in, in our communities, the open source movement and the e-patient movement, where people, ethical thinkers, have set the course for an entire industry. And I think we need to be doing that in the big data and healthcare community here. Because what needs to happen with that green bubble is it needs to move down and not down and to the right. I think we can all agree. So, I think that big data overall, ethics and big data overall, people are starting to make the case that this is not necessarily a good thing. I think we can all think of examples where the financial industry has not exactly uh, done the best thing for us. And other people have made that case well, so I don't have to. We, but here, if we look at finance our own industry, and in fact, really, the first people who really did big data in healthcare were the insurance injuries and insurance companies, and in many cases, the ethical issues with the way they have used big data, we just regard as normal. The same way we regard car wrecks as normal. But in fact, that's just one of these accepted tragedies. We shouldn't be accepting that. So uh, I'm actually going to criticize another you know, O'Reilly book, which uh, my apologies to my sponsors here. Uh, but big data ethics, they have this chapter that says, big data is ethically neutral. And I disagree with that very, very strongly. And the reason I disagree with that is because I find the arguments coming from two different areas compelling. The first is. Uh, uh, Eben's arguments that the first law of robotics applies here, which is to say we are not building just better data systems. We are slowly building a new kind of mind. And that is precisely the place where you need to have ethics deeply embedded. So you can talk about whether or not guns are ethical, and you can talk about whether nuclear weapons are ethical, and you can talk about whether the, these technologies are naturally neutral. But I think in a case where you're talking about a mind, it starts to matter in a different way. Hugo Campos can't get access to his own heart data, I encourage you to watch those videos. So what do we do? We need to embed uh, the ethics in, uh, uh, in the system. And what am I going to contribute to that? Today, I'm going to ask you to ethically handle the release 
of the doctor social graph. I'm going to be releasing the data that I got under a FOIA release that is the Medicare referral set, which is to say almost 80% of, uh, I'm sure, the referrals that take place across the country are in this data set or represented in this data set. I'm going to show you how healthcare works. In this country, if you're on the inside of an insurance company or you're in the government, you can look down and you can see into your data and you can see how things are going, you can see what's happening. But if you're not, you can't. And I'm gonna change where the curtain is and I'm gonna release this data. So um, there are 60 million uh, referral relationships in this data set. Uh, here is what it looks like. So you can see there, uh, those are nephrologists there. Uh, the blue dots are primary care. And you can see this is a random cluster of physicians in Houston, how they work together in order to deliver that. This is how it looks in uh, um, cardiology. It's a lot more complicated. So um, you can see videos of it. And uh, more importantly, I have already given this data to you. On the USBs that you carry, which are identical to this one, you have this data. You go to that website there, you'll get a password for it. So you have all been given this. So we're gonna use an open source eventually. Uh, after three months, this will automatically go to a Creative Commons license. How do you use this data? There's lots of ways. This is gonna really change things, but I have one request. I would like you to help me create a doctor rating algorithm or multiple doctor rating algorithms that patients find useful and doctors find fair. Now, I wanna give you an example from cardiology because you can actually do this example with the data that you have because I've given you other data, the supportive data, which includes the hospital compare data. So you have central line infection data on your USBs. And now you can see what cardiologists refer to hospitals that have poor central line infection rates. That is just a glimmer of what is possible with this data set. But I would like you to help me with that. More importantly, I would like to talk about some of the problems with it you're gonna have. On the data is one state level credential database, Texas, and it is not linked to the NPI database, so it's almost useless. You can't do, um, you can't do what you need to with it. So we're gonna be crowdfunding um, a massive new data set release, which is going to be all of these state level credentialing, we're gonna merge them with the referral database and the NPI database, and for $100, you guys can get a copy of this data early, same kind of idea, open source, uh, open source eventually release. This will become open source data. Everybody's gonna have access to it, but you get it first. So with that, I would like to ask you uh, to help me turn the world right side up. Thank you very much.